Uber introduces their first subscription program. What drivers notice when they're picking riders up and an Uber driver takes a 400 mile trip. It's this week in Rideshare News. Hey guys, what's up? It's Cecily, and yes, new hair, new week, new news. Nah, nah, all right, fine. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna get started. Uber has launched their first subscription service that combines Eats, Jump, and Uber Rides. Uh, this program costs twenty-five dollars a month. It will offer thirty minutes free on Jump rides, uh, discounted Uber rides, and free Uber Eats delivery. Folks are saying that they are modeling after Amazon in this way with Amazon Prime services, and they believe that it will be successful. This program is only testing in Chicago and San Francisco currently, and if successful, you should see it in other parts of the country. Now, I know that we're all drivers here, but some of you guys actually use the service just like I do. What are your thoughts? on this do you think you'd use uber eats more or even take advantage of the jump rides let me know in the comments we'd love to talk about uber their plans for the future autonomous vehicles but make no mistake lyft is closely behind uber in that race and, and trying to secure new customers new market share all that stuff and i wanted to share something with you guys i was surprised to find this lyft just released their autonomous driving data with hopes that any researchers or any developers in this area would take that information and help to improve their uh quest to have an autonomous vehicle in fact they said that they have released over 55,000 3d frames of captured footage hand labeled by human reviewers data collected by seven cameras and as many as three lighters depending on the car used and the reason why i read that is because i don't know what any of that means this reminds me of like open source i don't know if you guys are familiar with software but all of this software development uh where companies were like look we'll give you access to our data sets and things like that and you can create stuff or use this research to build out whatever it is you're working on just like wordpress for instance wordpress is an open source product it's used it to build websites and things like that. And people, developers, folks have been able to create uh, products and things based off of that uh, data. So yeah, if you didn't know that, Lyft was actually in the autonomous uh, technology uh, game as well. It seems like everybody's racing to, to launch that first product. And I think it's interesting that Lyft has released it to anyone that wants to use it. They also are announcing a competition where they will award $25,000 in cash and prizes. There's more information about that whole competition that's going to come out pretty soon. I think they're innovative by doing that. I think we can expect a pretty good product or products coming from this because you got so much competition. If you guys want more information about this article, that link is in the description. I was looking at the Business Insider the other day. It's a source that I like to peruse when I'm looking for content for these uh, news stories because they always offer favorable and helpful content for drivers. So if you're looking for a place to get some good information, please subscribe to them. Today they came out with a pretty cool little list. It's called Uber and Lyft Drivers Reveal the First Thing They Notice About Passengers When They Pick Them Up. For you new drivers, this is essential for you guys to be familiar with some of the things that successful drivers know. Let me preface, this article is not about profiling anybody. It's a great way for you to pretty much get a feel for what you're in for as far as a ride goes. So I'm going to read this brief list. They notice how many people are in the group. I automatically do that in my head. I'm sure you guys do too, and that's a good one. The second one is demeanor. This guy says demeanor is critical to determine whether you should engage with a passenger or not. I believe that this is like a sixth sense that people have. A lot of people don't have it. It's not common sense. I'll tell you that right now. And knowing if somebody is easy to talk to, if they want to be talked to or not, it's important for you to judge the demeanor of your passenger. Don't have your way with your passengers. Just don't because you're going to get pushed back and you're going to get a bad rating. And if you care about ratings, then that's not a good thing. But just the awkwardness factor, like nobody likes awkwardness. No one does. So if you don't want things to be awkward, then don't push and don't just start messing with people without taking into account what kind of mood they're in. A driver from Dallas said he notices people's smells. He says the quality of the ride is going to be based off of smell. Um, I've had some passengers that smell like straight up waste, if you know what I mean. Like, I mean, like, I don't know how that's even possible that you're even able to like 
have friends and family. Like that needs to be checked. Smell can turn you completely off. It will ruin my whole day. And if that's the case, there is nothing wrong with you rolling the windows down. Um, and I've even said, hey, you mind if I roll down the window? And if it gets too you know, too windy or too cold, then I'll turn the air on. I'm like, look, I'm not going to sit here and die with you. I just can't. I, just, I personally can't can't put up with it. Driver Chicago says that he looks at people's clothing. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm here in California. Everybody's pretty casual. You see people in suits and things like that sometimes. But for the most part, clothing is not a big issue for, for me. But maybe in more conventional and traditional cities parts of the country clothing may be an indicator on what type of person that you're dealing with but you can't judge a book by its cover so don't get too caught up in an outfit another driver said profile picture i know profile pictures are helpful for people to know who you are i think another thing and, and potentially in this situation we all have a tendency to judge people based off of what they look like our experiences with them what we know about certain types of people and so i would be careful in judging someone based off of their picture you never know really who you're dealing with until you come in contact with that person and i would just say just be careful in being prejudiced because i'm like like, uh, picture leads to questions about ethnicity and, and things like that. And as you deal with the general public, you will find that certain types of people are in certain groups. And I don't mean by race. I mean, just by energy. I mean, by personality. I mean like that. And I think that you should judge everybody as a whole. I would hate for someone to see a picture of me and be like, oh, she looks like this girl I used to know and she's this race. And so she probably has this particular taste of music and she talks like this. And so that I would hate for someone to, to, to slice me up and, and segment my personality like that. I'm a holistic kind of person and I think that most people want to be treated holistically. So this list is pretty fun, but it's not the end all be all. And the last one is if they smell like drugs. Don't know what they mean by that. Maybe marijuana here in California. It's on and it's popping. So many people have gotten to my car smelling like marijuana. I've had little old ladies get in my car smelling like marijuana. <laughs> it's an interesting thing being in a state where uh, recreational use is legal. You can find this article and others, as I stated, on the businessinsider.com. An Uber driver makes a 400 mile round trip for two sisters trying to attend their aunt's 100th birthday party. Two sisters were stuck at a Minneapolis airport trying to get to their aunt's birthday party. They ordered an Uber with hopes that someone would be willing to drive for 400 miles. The guy that picked them up, Jesus Florentino, received the call and says that he wasn't aware, obviously, until he picked the ladies up, that they were wanting to go on the 400 mile trip. So the destination was 200 miles away. And of course, once he dropped them off, he had to travel 200 miles back. Well, he said, and I quote, I feel that they need to be attending the birthday party and I enjoy driving. So yeah, it worked out well. It's an important occasion, and if I was in their place, I would appreciate very much someone bringing me there when there's no other way. Jesus received $216.30 for this trip, and she tipped him $54. She also gave him a five-star rating. Florentino has over 6,000 rides, and he said that this was his longest trip ever. And the reason I'm sharing this story is because people like you, yes, people like you, are doing things like this every day. You could decide to go offline and go home, you could tell someone, hey, no, I don't want to do that. But we all have had those moments where we thought, you know what? This person needs to get somewhere and I've got the time to do it. And I would rather see it through. I'd rather see this person get to their destination for whatever reason. Just pat yourselves on the back. Okay, because <laughs> CNN can't cover every single instance where this happens. But pat yourself on the back for knowing that when you go out your way to help people, that it actually makes a difference. And I hope that when you help people, you get tipped every time, too. That's very, very important. And finally, I have my favorite segment where I get to interact with you guys. It's called What Would You Do? In this segment, this story for the day is a pretty funny one. Today I was perusing the forums and I found this story which is very common. This one is very common and so I'm sure you should get a lot of feedback. Basically a driver is going to pick up a rider and there's some sort of confusion about where to pick this rider up. Um, the driver says that they were supposed to pick the person up on one side of the street and apparently the person is on the other side of the street. 
they can see each other. So the driver says that because it's an Uber pool, this is where I'm supposed to pick you up because I need to be headed in this direction. The rider says, I shouldn't have to walk across the street because I ordered from this location. And so there's something wrong with your GPS, but you need to come and pick me up. The driver says, uh, no, this is where the pin is. I can see it on my end. You can see it on your end. You should just walk yourself across the street and be here, or I'm going to take off if you don't get in the car. Um, the rider, uh, the driver said that the rider insisted to be picked up from across the street. And so the driver canceled, says that that person was a no-show and then open it up to the group. Do you think that I should have picked that person up? My response to this is very quick and painless. If you have a disagreement with a rider before you've even picked them up, my advice is to cancel the ride. The ride is already starting off bad. This person has had has an attitude. They perceive you would probably have an attitude. This person in your car in close quarters is not going to be a uh, it's not going to be a cool thing. Now for my guys who are not scared of anybody, and they don't care having somebody get in their car they're not bothered by it however that person may potentially if you take them to their destination they may be vindictive and may give you a one star so you're gonna catch it either way if you don't get the uncomfortable vibes if you don't get someone yelling at you talking to you crazy it's potential that that person will be passive aggressive and give you a low rating and if you care about ratings it's something that you don't want so that's my opinion let me know what your thoughts are in the comments uh if you're not subscribed to this channel this is the ride share guy why is she here oh my god i thought she had her own channel i do but i need you guys to subscribe here first Okay, great. And then I need you to find me on my channel. My name is Cecily and I have a channel called Drive Girl Drive. If you're curious about what I do and what I talk about when I'm not here, check me out. It's it's really cool. It's really cool what I do over there. You can also find me on Facebook too and message me. I will message you back. Um, yeah, that's it. That's all. I uh, hope you guys have a great weekend and I hope to see you guys soon. Bye.